Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 19 of the For Never World podcast. I'm your host, as always, For Never World, alongside my co host and very good friend, Daniel Santos, aka Shentai Reviews. Shentai, as always, please tell the people what's up. What's up? There we go, baby. That's how we starting it. Um, yeah. So today. We thought about, let's take it back a little bit. Let's look at some of the anime historically that had those episodes. Because, like, kind of springboarding off of last week's episode, what makes you give a fuck? Uh, well, okay, what makes you give a fuck? But what are the anime that actually made us give a fuck? So, we was going to talk about legendary, classic, out the park, that hooked you uh, first episodes that we have witnessed throughout the years. Again, we both have some pretty... A large um, library list in our minds of anime that we have watched throughout the years. And shit that really just rang out the park. Because don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with a slow burn. Where maybe it takes two, three episodes to really grab you in. But sometimes that first episode can really just make you say, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm watching. I'm sticking to this bad boy. Uh, so um, I'm going to let Shintai start this one off. Shintai, hit the people with an anime that that first episode just made you want to just, I don't even fucking know. Like, you couldn't just stop watching that shit. So whenever I think of, like, awesome, like, amazing just first episodes, Yu Yu Hakusho comes oh. to mind. Fever for never, fever for never. That first episode is like a mint classic. Like, you know, start to finish, amazing episode. Like, because it's so intriguing right from the start. The main character's already dead. And it's like, where do you go from there? <laughs> oh, man. And then you, you know, and then like after that, you know, you, you're like, you're hit with that right in the beginning. And so is he, by a car. Eh. Uh, puns, <laughs> puns, there we go. <laughs> but, like, it, it isn't even just, like, the shock of just, like, oh, my God, the main character's dead. But you learn about, you know, what type of person he is. And you, under, you, you get an idea of, like, there's a lot of nuance to him that, you know, there's this perception that he's this punk kid and that he's no good he's a delinquent but you know deep down inside he's actually a good person he just wants to you know maybe not just wants to help people but like deep down he's not a bad person he helps out that kid in fact the perception of him is so bad that like even the people that are in charge of the afterlife totally thought that he was just gonna be a dick and not help the kid <laughs> <laughs> like that's nuts well we, like, didn't ha we didn't have a place for you Yusuke we, we thought you was gonna say fuck it <laughs> yeah they were they were like oh that you, we can't even believe you saved that kid that's nuts yo uh, talk about misunderstood because I think that's a great if we was to put a label on Yusuke you're a meshi misunderstood I mean even the fucking teachers, they're like, well, uh, you know, that, that piece of shit is dead. But at least his little noble sacrifice will do some good for the school. Like, there's so much. Like, one day I plan on, like, I just want to dissect the living fuck out of Yu Yu Hakusho. Maybe, like, the first episode, the series as a whole, the final episode. So many different things. But that first episode, one of the things that hooked me from that first episode, and some people may disagree because there's like a small minority of people that they can't get into Hakusho show, whatever, but there's a scene in there that I'll never forget. I never look back. Uh, the moment I saw that scene, I was a Hakusho show fan for life. And that's when Kuwabara yep, walks I knew you in <laughs> he walks I, I know exactly what you're going to talk about. He walks into that funeral. He goes up and he's like, you weren't supposed to die. You're supposed to be here for me. And starts fucking crying. And his friends is trying he's to like, drag him. He's like, who am I going to fight? Wait. Who am I going to fight? I'm, get, I'm, I'm literally getting goosebumps talking about this shit right now. Dead ass. Like, that's how impactful that shit is. And he's like, as they're dragging him out, no, no. Like, holy shit. Talk about impactful, right? Mm-hmm. Like, even, even Yusuke, watching that, was blown away. He was like, what? 
I he's he didn't know that Corbara like thought of him that way. Like, and that's one of the really cool things about that episode is that Yusuke thinks he has all these people in his life pegged. He thinks he understands all the people around him. But seeing how they react to his death, he sees he understands them on a deeper level now because he he now knows like, oh wow, they actually cared about him much more than he realized. Shentai and... with the deep dive. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what like but again, this is all the first episode, and that's why I'm saying like Yu Hakusho episode one is a classic episode. It has more depth in this one episode than some shows do for their entire runtime. Yeah, Facts. I mean <sighs> I couldn't have said it better myself, and I've been a Hakusho Show fan since like 0304, man. But oh, and this is something because you know some people they they casually when they review anime or they talk about anime, they be like, oh yeah, the music was good. Those scores, I have them damn near memorized in my head, like the da na 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 da na 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 like. Oh my god, it's just so fucking emotional when the teacher goes into the wake and he's like, I I, I don't know why I don't want to speak positive of you, Yusuke. Okay, you should have stood around. You could have made something of yourself. Like, And then the music just keeps on. His mom, they're all broken up with her. Oh my god, man. my The hairs on my arm don't stop. Like, it, 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 In case y'all don't realize, this series means a lot to both of us. Like, mm -hmm. It is... It's revolutionary, man. There's a reason why, like, even though Yu Yu Hakusho may have not reached the heights of, like, a Dragon Ball Z, there is a cult following that to this day, you ask them, like, you know, they've seen hundreds of anime, they will say, oh, Yu Yu Hakusho easily best shown in uh, out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's amazing. And that first episode, hands down, is a, it, it's, it's got to grab you. If, if that first episode don't grab you, you're going to have a hard time like getting grabbed like maybe it'll take you know the next arc or some shit because yeah there's great episodes but there's something about that episode that is so special that i'm genuinely shocked when somebody tells me like oh i couldn't get into it like huh <laughs> what <laughs> nani nani kurasai chotto matte <laughs> so oh, yo definitely man oh i'm glad you you uh started that bad boy off with with hawker show because that's one of the greats and yeah like you know i really wasn't thinking because I, I had forgot just the impact of that first episode so that kind of didn't hit my radar didn't click like i love you hawker show is one of the greatest of all time but i just forgot how impactful that first episode truly is like there's just so yeah. much nuance and i i think you know to your credit though like it's because you hawker show as a show has so many great moments great scenes great episodes throughout its entire runtime like the, the whole show is so good that it can be easy to forget just how great that first episode is yeah yeah it's man talk about a fucking a classic with a classic first episode uh, killer I, I think... killer first steps i genuinely believe like if you uh, like you said if that first episode doesn't grab you Honestly, the rest of the show probably won't do it for you. Or or you're going to have to, like, really wait to, like, dark tournament. Because, like, maybe you just, like, you only really want incredible big action pieces and the dark tournament. But it's something, like, you need these moments, like, episode one, so that you could get attached to these characters and feel like, you know, you're part of this adventure with them. I, like, I feel I feel like, though, like, if you're just watching Hakusho Show for the fights, you know, you're probably watching it, you know... The wrong show. Like, Hawk Show's not just about the fights. And I think, and I think too, to boil down Hawk Show to its fights is to miss all that heavenly glory, you know? Yes, yes. Because, like, I'm not going to care about Yusuke versus Tagoro if I don't have all of that characterization, all of everything that comes before it, all the, the, just everything fuck i can't think of the way the right words right now like just everything like, like okay. especially the the relationship that uh toguro has with um with uh yusuke's master uh genkai, genkai. yes genkai. yes like when you find out about the backstory with those characters like just watch Hakusho, show people so, yeah just watch it <laughs> 
Fucking um, classic. Well, since we're talking about classics, because I got a decent list of a uh, of variety, but um, one that probably it's it's interesting because I'm I'm talking about the first version of this show, the episode one mm. of the first version of this Full Metal Alchemist. Like Brotherhood, mm. Brotherhood kind of shies away from the dramatic nature of how how the first one did it, and the first one is what really sold me on the show and hooked me to begin. With. I wouldn't have watched Brotherhood if I didn't see the first Full Metal Alchemist because I that I gotta say. I gotta say, I love Brotherhood, but that first episode, mm, yeah, not that good, not yeah. that good. It was. I, I don't even know. Like you do a reboot and you started with filler. Like Nanda Ska, what? <laughs> uh, I think, I think it's because they wanted people to know right away. Like, oh, this is not the same. It's not going to be exactly the same as uh, the 2003 series, but. I don't know. I think in doing, I think in the long run, I think they ended up like shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, like no, don't get me wrong, Brotherhood is a a classic in and of itself it, too. But it that is. first that first episode is like incomparable. Like them, these two kids, Alphonse and and Ed, trying to bring back their mom and the fucked up shit that happens and the way it's showcased and everything is like holy shit. If you want to start a show that just blows your emotions to smithereens. <laughs> Full Metal yeah. Alchemist, but, baby. But I would say, in general, I feel like the content that overlaps between 2003 and Brotherhood, uh, 2003 handled it better, generally. Like, it was paced better, it took its time more, it, it fleshed that content out. While in Brotherhood, it felt like they were, like, rushing through that content to get to the to the new content. I want to say they did what took 25 episodes in the original and like 12 or 13 they covered all that yeah. which is Yep, yep, yep. It was something like that. Speed bullet. Mhm. But oh, that first episode, yeah. <laughs> like you said though, and I even forgot how not bad but just disappointing Brotherhood's first episode was. Like, yeah, definitely not Brotherhood's first episode, the original first episode. Brotherhood overall the OG. As a- like brotherhood as a whole overall yeah way better than uh, original but in terms of that first episode and even again if we're going yeah like the first 25 like beats the first 12 but the first episode alone that shit is just legendary like you talk yep. about coming up with a great idea it's like it's simple enough that it's just like holy shit these kids try to bring their mother back to life and it cost them greatly and now they got to go on a quest but it was just handled so fucking brilliantly. Like, this mangaka came up with a fucking fascinating idea. And if you're going to start something off with a bang, <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist shows you how to do it. Absolutely. Man. Um, that fir- Yeah, that first episode, it just hits you right away with the, the, like, the main characters. They lose so much. And it's like... And it's such it, it's for such like an emotionally charged reason. They just want their mom back. Like yeah. how can you, how can you not feel for them? How could you not like, especially in the world that they live in, that like alchemy is real. Like you can't blame them, especially since they're so young. Mm-hmm. You you know they really needed their mom. And then at, at that time, uh. Anyway, in general, just Hohenheim was a pile of shit that, like, hey, yeah, I know your mom just died, but <laughs> I ain't being a dad right now, fam. Later, like, fuck you, Hohenheim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to lay some pipe and go. <laughs> I, I don't even fucking know. Like, I, I know Brotherhood, again, you find out a whole bunch of shit or whatever, not to get spoiler territory, but, like, just in general, like, yo, it's kind of your fault that they did this. If they had their guidance of their dad being around, mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't have been so desperate. Like, yo, we just want our fucking mom back. They wouldn't have even attempted yep. that because he could have said, hey, you know, if you try that, you're going to, yeah, you're going to get fucked up. And if it wasn't for Ed's Not- desperate attempt, Alphonse would probably be completely dead. You know, I don't even think, like, they would have even thought to do it if their dad was around because they they at least would have had still had their dad and their dad you know it would have been easier to go th- through her death with you know their dad as emotional support they didn't have any emotional support they only had themselves and you know they're just little kids like that's not enough 
Yeah, I think there was thing with like, was it their grandma? It was no, I don't know it, if was, it was it was it was Winry's. Winry's grandma, and she's you know yeah. very old lady. They they have so many fond memories with their mom. I think they even had some fond memories with Hohenheim back in the day or some shit like that, right? Like he was in the picture for a little bit. Yeah, you know how, that that opening where it shows like the picture and it. it I think the way the opening is like they're they're lightish glaring on the picture and you can't see his face and then it flames up. <laughs> yeah, because he needed to be flamed up, that motherfucker. <laughs> ah. I don't yeah. know, man. Hohenheim was, uh, yeah, I don't know. He was a real piece of work. What a fucking peach that guy was. <laughs> I mean, think about it. And we didn't uh, bring him up in the some of the worst fathers in animation. Maybe we need to do a part two at some given point. But, like, it's kind of like a Jing from Hunter Hunter, except fucking worse because these kids were traumatized they needed somebody like going he kind of just like in the beginning of the series you see he, he don't give a fuck fuck my whatever i'm just i'm I'm chilling i'm fishing i'm i'm doing whatever like these kids mm. were fucked up from not having their like their mom dying and then their father not even being around like so it's similar situation except ed and al needed their one of their parents or something more so than gone monster Oh, 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 yo, you, you, you pulling them out. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think about Monster either. There we go. Do it. Do dude, it. Dude, that first episode is so fucking good. Like, I feel like if you aren't pulled in by that first episode, uh, like similar to Hakusho, the show's probably just not for you. Because that first episode is killer. Yo. Like, like it, we first see Tenma, main character and he's just doing his thing he's just being a surgeon you know just doing his job just following instructions doing whatever but then he's forced to feel the weight of that narrow-mindedness of just like you know tunnel vision just doing your work and not thinking about it when he was uh, reassigned to do uh, someone else. It was and like then, a politician or something like that. And they were like, hey, you know, that, that fuck that little yep. kid. We, we, this politician's important. No, it wasn't a little kid. It was, um, it was this, this, uh, it was a husband first. Mm, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's been a while. It's been a while. No, no, I, I, I feel it. So, like, first he was reassigned. And then afterwards, um the the wife approaches him and she's like you know my my why did you let my husband die and he's like i didn't do anything she, and she was like you were supposed to be a surgeon and then you didn't do it and now he's dead give me back my husband and he's just like completely in shock he's just like what <laughs> oh my god yeah and then and then he has that talk with um with his fiance who's like oh my god she's like the most fucking <laughs> detestable bitch in the whole show <laughs> oh my god Fuck. and he's having this discussion with her he's like he's like i was just doing my job you know like i was told to do surgery on this other guy it's not my fault you know I shouldn't be blamed for this. And then she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's not like people's lives are made equal anyways. And then when he heard that, he was like, the fuck do you say? <laughs> <laughs> and um, then she has that, like, that smirk on her face and she's eating her fucking steak. And he's just, like, staring at her in disbelief. She's just got that, that shit-eating grin. <laughs> I'm trying to look up her fucking name right now because it needs to be said. Uh, uh, I'm almost there. Keep going, keep going. And and it's in that moment when he finally realizes, like, something's got to change. Ava like, I, Heinemann. Ava. I, uh, Ava. That's her name. Ava. Ah, uh, that bitch. Yeah. That fucking bitch. <laughs> oh, I love to hate her. She's so bad. Oh, my God. And she she lasts, like, because, you know, you would think, like, 
probably after shit went south and everything happened with Tenma, which I know we're talking about first episode, but I just gotta sm- slide this bad boy in there. Like, you would think you would never see the bitch again. Like, okay, whatever. And the bitch still keeps on, like, showing up here and there. It's like, fuck you, die. <laughs> <laughs> I like what they did with her character, though. Like, because they... She never comes around to being a likable character. Like, I don't I don't think at... at there, there comes a point where suddenly I'm like, oh wow, I love her character now. <laughs> like she's always, she's always still kind of a bitch, but at the same time, she changes a lot throughout the story, and it's interesting to see her like still make mistakes. But you know, she tries to get better, and then she regresses and she gets worse, but then tries <laughs> to improve again. It, <laughs> she's a mess. She's a fucking, but she's like an entertaining mess. Yeah, uh, yeah. What uh, did we see Johan in episode one? He's in episode like the the little kid that shows up. Was yes. he part of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's in the first episode, uh, because that that was when um, Tenma decided he was not going to listen to the director's instructions and he said he's because he was supposed to be reassigned to someone else to a talk to a, a politician yeah and that was Tenma a politician s- right yeah yeah and then that's when tenma said no fuck you i'm gonna help this little kid this little <laughs> kid needs me only i can do this top five biggest mistakes in all of anime <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! That was like, yo, you, it was at that very moment he done fucked up because, man, like, I mean, obviously, you know, how the fuck could he know what the fuck was about to happen after no, making yeah. that? But like, his life was already like, it starts off where he ruined his life with that because like the whole hospital, the director, his his fiance. Well, at first he did. At first. But then eventually things completely turned around and then suddenly things were great for him. Yeah, and fucking, I don't know, that story is like, I mean, again, you know, the first episode alone is just like, it's such a different type of story, right? Like, it's just, it feels different, the way the narrative is written, the characters feel so serious. Like, I don't think there's, like, is there even a moment in Monster that made you laugh? (laughs) Um... Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> There's like nothing funny about it. Like everything is just like poor Tenma. Poor what what is her name? Annie? Ann? On. On on. It's like poor poor on. Poor uh n- not poor Johan. Uh, fuck Johan. No. <laughs> not poor Johan. Man, that monster yeah, mon- is <sighs> monster. Monster is such a monster of a show. Eh. Oh, oh God! Sec- second pun now. <laughs> yeah, what are boy. we doing? <laughs> we in it? <laughs> you know, I- I've seen a criticism, like you know how I spoke about, like you know, Hawkins show. Some people have criticism about certain things. One of the criticisms I've seen about like the first episode in the series as a whole is people don't like the art style. Like they say, the art and even the animation to a certain degree, they criticize Monster with that, despite the fact, and maybe they don't even know this that hey, Madhouse did it, on top of the fact that this is Madhouse using a budget to create a seinen-based anime that is like 70-something episodes true and faithful yeah, to the gonna, manga. I was gonna say, like, first of all, I think the show looks fine. Like, obviously, it's not, like, you foldable fucking, like, super amazing animation or anything like that, but, like, I think... I think art style wise, it fits, right? Like this is not a fantastical world. This is not like, you know, a hyper reality. This is reality. You know, there's nothing supernatural in this show. There's no vampires. You know, there's there's not. You you could like, argue Johan feels like one. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, okay, Johan kind of feels like a supernatural <laughs> character in a way. But he's not. No, no, no. It, it, you know, it really no, nothing in the nothing in the show is. It cuts it down to the core of like the most ugliest version of humanity 
in its truest form without like you said no no fantastical nonsense like this is reality so it gives you realistic look on top of the fact that it does something that most because you know majority of anime they're either in some crazy you know supernatural place or they're in japan this takes place in, in germany does it start in germany in germany germany yeah, yeah and, and they they don't go globe trotting but they do go across europe so it's not only in germany but it's mostly in like yeah so it gives it a different aesthetic uh, aesthetic look to match the fact that this isn't Japan, this is Germany, so let's change it up a little that, bit. That that fucking reminds me. That fucking reminds me. A friend of mine, I got him to watch Monster. He's German and he came to me in shock of how accurate the show is. Oh wow. Be- because he says that every fucking time he sees anything even remotely German in anime, like nine times out of ten, it is wrong, completely wrong. And he said that monster, like he said that some of the German is a little off, like grammatically it might be. But he said like a lot of the locations are spot the fuck on. Like, uh, and he, and he Urasawa, said, he, baby, I, I'm yeah. sure he does his fucking research. He was like, he was extremely impressed. Monsters, this shit, man, like. <laughs> If y'all, if y'all ain't seen Monster, what are you doing? Bro, I just gotta, before we, we wrap up Monster, I gotta say, um, cause you know, we don't get to talk about Monster all that much. Uh, one of my favorite scenes of the entirety of the series is there's a certain person that smokes cigarettes that Tenma constantly tells him to, cause you know, he's a uh, doctor. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And something happens to the character and Tenma's like, Yo, just go ahead, smoke your last cigarette. And like, cause I watched it in dub, believe it or not. And no, it's a great dub. It's a great dub, dude. And the guy that voices um Tenma for Naruto fans out there, that's I want to say Gara's voice actor, and it kind of sounds vocally similar to him. And yeah, but, Liam O'Brien, bro. Like his vocal performance for that scene, like you hear it in his voice that Tenma is just breaking down seeing what happens with this patient and shit like that is just oh amazing amazing monster is an amazing show it is one of the best anime you can see and the dub surprisingly is great like normally i like to watch subbed but i had no problems watching monster dubbed like it it was great yeah, they did a phenomenal job. Like, I'm sure probably the Japanese is better or whatever, but there's, like, the dub is, is great. It's it's fucking great. So there's no, like, oh, my God. like Dude, yeah. dude, Richard Epcar as Inspector Lungay. Oh, oh, my oh. God. Dude, Bro. what a legendary character. <sighs> Lungay is so fucking good. What a fucking... There's so many points where you just want Lungay to fuck the fuck off. Like, take your fucking shitty destroyed marriage ass and and get the fuck out of here. And it's like, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. (laughs) Yo, yeah, the thing with his family was like... It's really fucked up. Because at first it makes you think, like, he doesn't even care. But then, like, as you go through the story... it, it. you you realize it does it didn't it did impact him and he does care but like he's just such an awkward weirdo that like (laughs) it's hard to tell and he's just so obsessed with work like work is everything to him but like what's really interesting is that for the majority of the show he's going after tenma for the wrong reasons but what i really appreciate is that from his perspective his theories make sense. He doesn't have all the facts, but for the facts that he does have, this the theories that he comes up with make sense. Yeah. And that's I thought that was like that was really amazing how the how they were able to make his character antagonistic towards uh, towards Tenma while still like keep in mind like he's not a bad dude and he's not doing it you know, to be an asshole, he thinks he's genuinely doing the right thing, going after Tenma, even though he's wrong. He misses, but he's not like a Richard Moore from Case Closed that is just a fucking buffoon. <laughs> like, he's yeah. actually a competent detective, and he has great leads, like Shit I said. It's just that 
uh, you know, it's just he, he just he just didn't have all the details, and you can't blame him for not having them because you know there's there's just certain things that like it would be unreasonable for him to to pick up on. Yeah. Like, yeah. What a fucking amazing show! Like, yeah. very underappreciated. Like my only problems with that show were like <laughs> nitpicks. Like it's otherwise that that's like easy 10 out of 10 Mm -hmm. madhouse man shout out to fucking madhouse um okay uh let's see looking at my list um i'm not sure if you've seen this one or not but um and it's not as legendary as some of the ones we've just talked about but i definitely gotta point out an episode that really grabbed me and kept me going for a while uh, Dead Man Wonderland, episode one. Have you seen Dead Man Wonderland, Shintai? Yeah, I didn't like it. You did not like episode one? I don't remember episode one. I didn't like the show. Okay, well, episode one, they're in a classroom. All of a sudden, some fucking shadowy figure shows up, kills every kid except one in the classroom. The main character, Gante Igarashi. And then he gets blamed and framed for the murder of his entire classroom. And gets sent to this crazy asylum called Dead Man Wonderland. Where you gotta play life or death games in order to survive. Like, say what you want about the, the show as in, uh, as a whole. Because the it doesn't do the manga justice. It ends I off. heard that. I, I heard that the manga is way better. And it was, the, yeah. the anime rushed through it. So like, it yeah, this is not... Shit. So yeah, like even though I wasn't a fan of the anime, I'm not saying like anything about the the source material. I'm sure that's fine. You know, I'm sure it's great. But that first episode, like talk about again, shock factor. And, and maybe I'm a sucker for the shock factor. Like holy shit. And sometimes it doesn't follow up. Like another one that I have on this list that while I enjoy the series as a whole, I feel as though the first episode led me into shit that like, get the fuck out of here. Seraph of the End. Have you seen Seraph of the End? No. So episode one, <clears throat> similar to Dead Man Wonderland. Again, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a sucker for that shock factor, that shock value. Uh, these kids, they're like, I, I forget exactly how they describe the setting in the beginning. But basically, there's like vampires and shit in this world. And these kids, they're like orphans in this vampire world. But they're all together. By the end of the episode, every kid is murdered. And one, the main character... I, I, Damn, I even forget his fucking name. Runs away and barely fucking escapes from the vampires and shit. And it's just like really, really epic and shit. But uh, then it goes into like that thing that I really, really fucking hate. Like, uh, you don't know what I just described. At the very least, it sounds kind of hype, right? Like, hey, this is some fucking crazy show. These kids get killed by vampires and you running away into this vampire-filled world. Vampires are, are running the world and shit like that. Society is mm -hmm. completely destroyed. And then he goes to a school to learn how to slay vampires. And... <laughs> opposed to like a because like jujutsu kaisen kind of has somewhat of a similar type of thing where like oh he learns this and then he goes to school but like it doesn't stay on that that long seraph of the end it kind of like has episode two three four five i think even it's kind of like uh, boring and just kind of like the first episode misrepresented what we was getting into again later on it gets back to that point of like holy shit humanity's fight for survival against these vampires that have overran shit and this plot twist and i like it but that first episode is like so fucking crazy and then it kind of just uh but it was still legendary and that's what one of the things like i really I'm, I'm a sucker for a crazy first episode i always end up if there, it's you know the follow-up ain't great i'd be pissed off but uh dead man wonder like going back to dead man wonderland that first fucking episode man like the 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 sheer fact of them framing him for the fucking murder of his whole classroom that was one of the things i'm like god damn like just put your fucking feet in those shoes for a second that's a, a nightmare no yeah yeah i, I definitely i def, i def, like i'm i'm starting as you were talking about, i'm starting to remember like what was happening in that first episode and yeah it it's come back yeah that was a pretty like attention grabbing like first episode even though the rest of it was the, the show didn't turn out so good but yeah that was a good first episode yeah like again in comparison to the shit that like we just talked about legendary stuff fma monster yu yu haka show so like i said it doesn't measure up to those but the, i guess that's maybe more like some of the stuff that modern anime does now like i just said seraph of the end that was a 
2015 anime. Dead Man Wonderland was a 2012, no, no, 2011 anime. So there's a little bit more modern stuff and shit like that, and them trying to just hit you as hard as they can with the first episode. But I just, I distinctly remember watching those episodes for the first time and being completely hooked. Again, shows didn't quite live up to the hype that those first episodes brought, but considering mm-hmm. that's the nature of this fucking episode i felt like yeah they're, they're worth a mention at the very least like because i agree like Demon wonderland especially if you read if you read the manga you will probably think even more poorly of the anime because <laughs> the, manga is, the manga is just like amazing and uh, I, don't, I don't know but i heard that studio um they went under man globe they actually yeah i, I want to say they're the ones that oh they, yeah they did they did gangsta I forgot about that yeah yeah they uh what you call it? So they weren't probably the best to begin with. If you're like fucking shit up, because Dead Man Wonderland, a lot of people thought that was gonna be like a humongous hit, and eh. the the legitimately the only anime I can think of by Manglobe that I really liked was Samurai Shampoo. Well, that's a that's a fucking classic right there. That's a, it is a classic. That's a legendary. It also show. had a great first episode. Oh hey, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell yeah, Manglobe fucking um. I guess, you know, they miss some time. <laughs> I mean, there's no anime studio with, like, a spotless record. They've all made some good stuff and some trash. Ufotable has, like, one or two blemishes under its belt, right? Yeah, they made that uh, Geo fucking fish attack whatever movie. Geo? Wait, they made a movie on Geo? Yeah. That the horror mo- manga by Junji Ito, yeah. The way was it Junji Ito? I, maybe I'm off on that part because I, I say every horror story is Junji Ito. <laughs> Let me double check. But um, yeah, I don't I don't know if it was Junji Ito, uh, but they did do Gyo. I didn't watch it personally. My dad actually watched it and he didn't like it. Oh no, no. He was like he was like. This sucked, <laughs> and he watched it because he's a Ufobo fan. Because he he loves fate, yep, and he yep. loves J- Junji Ito. It was Junji Ito. Wow. Okay. And it was Ufotable 2012. Wow. So you are telling me they they fucking bon- no? Uh, cause I read Gyo, I, and I I I was creeped the fuck out by Gyo. I, yeah, it was, it was so fucking weird. Like Junji Ito, you want horror stories? I mean some of the best shit ever like i'm to this day still waiting for the uh uzumaki anime that was supposed to come out this october uh from toonami like he he does his shit but I, i'm i'm kind of shocked like in a way i i just because i i gotta see like yo you foldable how can you like that's a that's an alley hey, slam dunk like like i said <sighs> i didn't watch it my dad did and he didn't like it but you know you might feel differently i don't know Cause I mean, it's the source material phenomenal, one of the best horror out there. And then you add Ufotable, the probably at, at this moment in this generation, think, it's the best studio. Ufotable is the best studio uh, in in twenty uh, twenty. I think it is important to realize though that like I think that was early Ufotable, like that was before they established their identity. You know, so yeah, it, it was. It was the early years, so I think it's expected that it that that you know they'd be rougher then, and then eventually they started to like build their craft and and then they started making god tier stuff like Kara no Kyokai. Wow, um, I don't know. You have me kind of shooketh right now, thinking there's <laughs> a a Gyo movie made by Ufotable, but it doesn't sound like it came out good. I I'm gonna have to. I like, mean. Maybe my dad's tripping. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because that's a fucking alley-oop if there ever was one. Great source material, top-of-the-line studio. That's a match made in heaven. So I got to, yeah, I'm going to have to investigate that bad boy. I remember reading that at a pretty critical time in my life and being blown away and shit. But, yeah, um, we're getting sidetracked. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the fuck we're talking about killer fish. <laughs> oh, great, great. Um... Well, shit, I think you could agree with me with this one. Uh, the first episode of one of the most bizarre adventures out there, JoJo's. JoJo! <laughs> ah! We've, we've talked about this before because, you know, the, the first JoJo's season part, whatever, uh, people always hate on that shit. They talk, but like, like we've said before in the past, 
You ain't gonna get into part four if you didn't get into part one. And that first episode, I'll never forget. It was around the time when I started uh, expanding my wings or or my my taste for different types of anime. And I remember watching that first episode and being blown the fuck away and saying, "Oh my god, I didn't realize like what people have been saying for years that JoJo's is this fucking good." JoJo is like, it's like one of my favorite animes because like. It's so over the top and it's so crazy, but like at the same time, it's just, it, it still get, manages to get you to care. Like it's not just stupid for the sake of being stupid all the time. Like it'll, it still manages to, to make these like these characters that you, you give a fuck about. And that first episode, it really gets you invested in what's going on with the characters. That's why, like, because people sometimes criticize the fact that I always put, like, Dio Brando as one of, like, the greatest villains of all time. People give me shit for that. They say, no, how can you say that? If anything, the villain from C- uh, Part 4 is the best of JoJo's and Dio's not. But, first of but all, that Dio fir- is iconic. Th- that first episode is nothing without Dio Brando and his antics and every fucked up thing that he puts Jonathan through. Yeah, like... I love how, uh, I, I remember, like, uh, someone was asking Araki, like, um, why do you, do you kill dogs in, in the manga so much? Like, do you hate dogs? He's like, no, I love dogs. I do that so that you know that they're the bad guy. <laughs> and what, and what does Dio do in that fucking episode? Oh my god, yo. Yeah, that's an, an iconic, and it's crazy because that was a, a newer anime. That was what twenty twelve. I mean, it was based on old source material, of course, from like the late eighties or some shit. But mm-hmm. um, that was David production. On top of the fact that, let's look at it. Even though it, it hasn't been mimicked, really, the the style that David Productions introduced with uh, that first episode. You know, the color switches, the the pop up text. Like if you're reading a manga, like David Productions kind of. Yep brought something brand new to the table that hasn't really been done in anime up to that point agreed definitely it's it's very unique and you know yeah i haven't really seen anyone even try to do something similar like that i feel like at this point like it would just feel like such a blatant copy of david production yeah that's kind of like their trademark um because it's just so fucking off the wall and shit and some people probably might not be able to enjoy that because it might pull them out of the experience but i think that's integral to the experience of jojo's the fact that like yo you just don't know what's going to happen next even visually not just story-wise like you could walk into a room and all of a sudden the entire color palette has just went fucking orange Mm -hmm. and but that first episode man from you know, uh, that, that horse carriage accident that created this universe. <laughs> if it wasn't for that fucking accident of Dio's fucking dad, which, again, another callback to that episode we made of Terrible Fathers. I'm telling you, people, watch that episode, which I noticed, shout-outs to you guys. A lot of people have been flocking to that episode every time I mention it. The the, the Worst Fathers episode we did, which I think we, we yep. got to do a part two because people are starting to recognize that was a dope episode. Dio's <laughs> father, like you know fucking robbing the guy f- for his shit while he's there after a horse accident yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. what type of piece of shit are you <laughs> next level Bro. next level piece of shit <laughs> oh my god and then you know seeing Dio I wish like I would have been fine and maybe cause and I wanna say I did read the the part one of the manga of Jojo's but I can't really remember but I wouldn't even have been mad of a full on first episode of seeing Dio's upbringing because like you, you get it like within a couple minutes like they're showing Jonathan as he's getting older being a slouch they show Dio in the underworld and Dio going through this and his father being a piece of shit I would have fu- been fine with a full first episode of just seeing from the moment the car uh, the, the carriage accident happens and then see, uh, seeing Dio grow up like I would have been fine with that because like I don't know I love Dio Brando he's so fucking cool uh, like if I'm being honest, Dio is probably cooler in part three because he has all these powers and he's so magnificent. But I like Dio more in part one. I feel like Dio is just a sinister piece of shit in part one. And he's sinister in part three, but there's just something more like it's almost like they're on equal terms and equal footing, Jonathan and Dio the, in part one. The thing I like <sighs> about Dio in part three, though, is that 
he seems more mysterious. Like, True. Like, he's more, like, orchestrating everything in the background like some fucking crazy puppet master, you know? And everyone <laughs> is just, like, you know, dangling on his strings. And I think that's really cool. But I do agree that there is something... Because, like, you, the thing is, though... In part three, that feels earned, and it wouldn't have feel, felt earned if it wasn't for seeing him in part one. Yes, yes, yes. Cause you, like, you see that growth of his character and how he became the way he did in part three, in part one. If you think about it, it's like, yeah, you got to go from being a grunt and being a street, you know, and a thug and all that shit, and then you become a boss. <laughs> you yes. Know? Absolutely. That was, ah, oh, yeah, JoJo's episode one. Again, you could talk shit about part one all you want, but you wouldn't be into JoJo's if it not wasn't me. for that. No, 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 not you. No, that, that, not just, me, fam. The, the JoJo's fandom. Part one is good. Dio Brando for life. I don't give a fuck. Hate if you want. Because I think, to be honest with you, what I said is an unpopular opinion. Like, mo most people probably say they prefer part three, Dio, over part one. I just really like seeing, you know, and, and it's a level of, uh, grounded to reality in part one because yeah it, like I guess it's like episode two and on or some shit it starts getting fantastical with the mask and all that stuff but in episode one he's just like being a piece of shit a normal piece of shit doing fucked up things of like really cruel but it's not fantastical it's not you know superpowers or nothing like he's just hey I'm gonna jab my fucking thumb in your eye I'm gonna make out with your girlfriend before you motherfucker I'm gonna throw your dog in the fucking incinerator but he's <laughs> but, yeah after sh after he kisses her she like uses <laughs> dirty dirty water to clean her mouth <laughs> bro but th that gave birth to one of the greatest memes ever and that is you thought you was gonna kiss jonathan but it was me dio me, dio oh legendary oh, meme. legendary <laughs> oh love it love it love it love it love it so, so shout good. out to jojo's bizarre adventure man uh and, we, and what and what that said don't skip jojo parts yeah yep yep i mean we covered that, that on, on that hard episode line stance. We, we we have to reiterate that because that's very important it's like again people will tell you like oh but you know you, just, you could watch part three no fuck that shit you, if you go to part three you are skipping out on first of all arguably one of the best jojos part two and you're skipping out on the foundation dio brando like i've said before i gotta say it again dio brando is the foundation to everything else if it, if you don't watch part one and see what he does and what he represents you're not gonna understand well part two these uh the, the pillar men come from deals shit part three deals back part four deals grunts part five like it, it continues and continues it's always like fucking hell Dio is the catalyst to damn near everything in those first six parts seven eight i'm not familiar with so i won't speak on that but watch watch it from the fucking beginning and enjoy yourself okay <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so that was a lengthy one um if you guys want to see us cover some more uh legendary episode ones let us know but now it's time for a friendly game of who wants to be an anime fan this time uh it's been a bit but i'm putting shintai in the hot seat today oh shit shintai you ready born ready all righty this broken character said this quote that is deep as fuck <laughs> you ready when people okay. break okay. When people break their old selves, they embark on a journey to find their new selves. Who said this? Is it A. Koenma from Yu Yu Hakusho, B. Hisoka from Hunter Hunter, C. Urahara from Bleach, or D. Gintoki from Gintama? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> you want to read it again? Yeah, yeah, go for it. <sighs> This broken character said this deep as fuck quote. When people break deep their as... old self <laughs> <laughs> When people break their old selves, they embark a journey to find their new selves. Koenma from Yu Yu Show A. Hisoka from Hunter Hunter B. Udahara from Bleach C. Gintoki from Gintama D. The Hunter Hunter character. Hisoka? Yeah. Final answer? Final answer. No! <laughs> no! 
Who was it? Sakata Gintoki from Gintama. <laughs> oh, fuck. I've never seen Gintama. Shit. Gintama. Hey, I, I had to uh, finally get one. I, I've gotten how many wrong now, damn it. Yeah, it was about damn time, okay? <laughs> yeah. You fucking got me. Hey, it, it, it had to happen. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's wrap this bad boy up. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've experienced for the week. A um, couple of different things. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of One Piece World Seeker for the PS4. That's been cool. kind of fun. It's um, it's like an open world One Piece game. Uh, I'm not a fan of the fetch quest, to be honest with you. Uh, I've been playing it with my nephew, and he's not a fan of that shit either. He's like, come on, fam, I want to throw hands and shit. So I'm not a fan of the fetch quest, which I, I don't know if I mentioned it um, on mic before, but that's a, a complaint I have with video games that they want to be really fucking long, but not put in the effort to make it long with, like, really exciting missions. So let's throw in a shit ton of fetch quests to make it feel like it's a long game, when in reality, we just got you running in fucking circles for hours. But um, aside from that, it's kind of been fun. Um, what else? I've uh, been watching more. I'm on episode three now of Higurashi When They Cry Go. Uh, still fucking loving it. Like, there's not many elements besides episode two that really make me feel like it's a sequel. So I'm wondering how much of that is just a marketing ploy to get old fans in as well as new fans. Because, like, episode three just felt like I'm watching one of the old episodes of Higurashi with different animation and different art. Um, so... A little bit disappointed in that regard because I thought there'd be more. Maybe episode four or five, uh, it'll bring back to the table like, oh, okay, this is a, a, a sequel. Because right now it just feels like it went back to a remake, which I'm fine with that because I love Higurashi anyway. But um, yeah, I want more of those elements uh, to return. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen's been cool. Dragon Quest Die, I've been fucking still having a blast with that. Um, I really like Die. Definitely like there's like a Super Saiyan esque. Uh I, I was kind of curious um, if that show has inspired you to play the games at all, or not really. Funny enough, or I at haven't. Least, at least the new, at least the new one. Funny enough, I haven't yet. But every time I go to GameStop now, which I've been kind of going a little bit more lately, um, I've been looking at it. The thing is, is like, do I want to pay fifty for it? I'm not sure if I'm going to really like it because I've never. I Go ahead. I will I will I will say if you do decide to pick it up get the Switch version. That's that's the one. Yep, that's the one I was going to yeah, get. Yeah. Be, because the Switch version, the graphics aren't as good obviously compared to like the PS4 or the Xbox, but they the the Switch version has a lot of extra content that's not in the other versions. So it comes like preloaded with all the DLC. No, not not even just that. Like it, they added stuff to this that's exclusive to the Switch version. Oh, wow, that's fucking dope. So, yeah, like, so like I, there's there was like one thing where like in the original version you can only get married to like one character and that's it. And then in the Switch version they changed it so that you can get married to multiple female characters instead. So that and it's not even just that they added like new story bits. They added uh, like new quests and stuff, so like it's it's it just has more content in it that's only in that version. Had it been more on, and maybe it is worth the fifty bucks, sixty bucks, because I've seen it's still full priced at a, like a Walmart, I think, and then like at GameStop, I saw it for like fifty or vice versa, one or the other. Um, I'd be more comfortable paying twenty five to thirty just because of the fact that I don't know if I'm gonna really dig it that much because i've never played dragon quest i think i probably played like one or two back in the day but um i i really don't remember it too much so like maybe at that price i'd feel more comfortable just because again i don't want to spend like 50 60 bucks and then like it just mm, sits there because like you know i can't get into it but i have been more interested in getting into dragon quest because i am just fucking loving this shit like i am <laughs> i'm really like i i can't even believe it because i thought again this was going to be a quaint relic of the of the season i might check out episode one never watch it again and here i am faithfully waiting for episode three there's fucking uh the main character die undergoes like a super saiyan transformation in episode two that i'm like holy fuck balls this is fucking insane so uh i'd recommend yeah. it, especially i, mean, I 
I personally like Dragon Quest. Like, I'm not, I, like, I think I mentioned before, I'm not, like, a super diehard fan, but I do enjoy the series, and I feel like if there is any game in the series that you would enjoy, it would be the newest one. There's, like, a hack and slash one that came out for the PS4 a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, there is. So, you might like that one, too, then. Like, if you just... If you if like if your problem is turn based combat, like if you if you don't like turn based combat at all, then yeah, maybe you won't like the new one and maybe one of the hack and slash games is like more your speed. That one is more like it plays like Dynasty Warriors. Like Oh, uh, okay. Just, like, like One Piece Pirate so, Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, Muso. It's it's a Muso game. Okay. So yeah, yeah. if you wanna play something like that and you feel you know and that's um that's also probably gonna be a lot cheaper too yeah that so. probably be like 2015 or some shit because that was a couple years ago now but no i don't have a problem with uh turn-based rpgs i i i think back to like even hyper dimension neptunia i don't know if you remember that game that shit was fun as well i i remember yeah like i love that shit so if it's anything like that combat system i know i'll i'll get into it it's just a matter of me i guess it, picking it yeah up. it's like that I, w I wish, to be honest with you, which kind of goes back to your point that you made last week or the week before. Uh, I kind of wish it matched. Like, I wish the, the story then, well, I guess maybe I wouldn't like it, but I wish the new game was based on this story because I would fucking go crazy. Like, holy shit, I get to go and play the game of this story. So, like, I guess that's a bummer for me. Like, I I'll go and play this story and I might not like the story as much as I'm loving the adventures of Die right now. Yeah, but the story in the, in the new game is good, though. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know. I gotta, I guess, uh, check it out. Yeah, I'll probably pick that up. Honestly, that seems like... I've been collecting games for the Switch lately and having some fun with this, so why not? I mean, I love the fucking new anime. Yeah, I mean, I, I, under, I understand being a bit hesitant because it is kind of pricey, but, I mean, I think it's a good game. I think it's worth checking out. Yeah, I'll put that on my to-do list. I mean, it's in my Amazon card as well, so <laughs> it's been on my mind. <laughs> um, and aside from that, though, uh, well, I'll give my brief opinion of it, or we could go back and forth, whatever. I watched episode two of the Inuyasha sequel anime, Yashihime Princess Half Demon. And if you could see my smile right now. <laughs> Guess. Guess who also watched that episode? Toa Greatness! Toa Greatness! Toa I, greatness. I, I will say, I will say, I did like Toa. I she, can't front, I can't lie, she's a good character, I liked her. I went straight into this thinking, Moroha's gonna be my favorite, this is Inuyasha and Kagome's daughter, she looks cool as shit, and after watching that episode, first, like, okay, are you in agreement with, with me with this, that Compared to this episode, kind of fuck episode one. Like, this episode should have been episode one. I, I know that, yeah, they wanted to grab the fans in with a nostalgia trip and shit like that. But do you agree with me that this episode is better than the first episode? Or I think it's more appropriate as a first episode. Because the first episode basically felt like nostalgia bait. Yeah. But I hated this episode. Oh boy, we're gonna have to put I, a Shintai down. I genuinely, down. like, I genuinely did not like it. So let's get into it. What 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 didn't you like, Shintai? Let I gotta shut okay, Shintai okay. down right now. Let's go. Let's go, okay. baby. So, so in the very fucking beginning, we see Toa and her sister as little kids, and their designs are so fucking weird because their heads are like. You know, three quarters of their fucking bodies. Oh come like, on! Are you fucking like, kidding me right now? That is such. You look a, so fucking weird. That is a shitty fucking nitpick, Shintai. You fucking know what their head size is really. I'm thinking about to say. It looks well, the, so the, weird. The, the the comparison of their relationship. Blah blah blah. This motherfucker says, "Oh, their head size." Are you kidding me right now, motherfucker? What? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying that was a deal breaker. I'm just pointing out. That, that, that it looked fucking weird. That was adorable, like, seeing them together, these little kids, and they're in the wild, and come on. Man. Okay, so what else? Like, what else? What else? So, like, when the, when the fire, when the forest is on fire or whatever, and they're running, 
she's like Toa's like holding her sister's hand and then her inner monologue is like I don't know why I let her hand go and then she does and I'm like what the fuck what what do you mean she let her hand that's, go that's so weird why she was a little they're little kids there's a forest fire she's scared as no fuck. yeah but it I think the thing is, I don't think we needed that monologue of like, I don't know why I let her hang. They could have just like had the scene play out. And I think it would it would be understandable of like, oh, OK, she pro she just like accidentally let her hand go. I will admit when I saw that part, keeping it real, like I did find it a little bit awkward just being 100 percent transparent. I did find that part awkward. Like, yeah, I'd probably agree with you that that wasn't necessary per se. I think the intention of that, which isn't justifiable by any means, but was to really push forth that the narrative for this story is going to be from the perspective of Toa and that she's like the main character amongst the, the crew and the main character cast that we have, but that she's the lead role and this narrative sure. is for, from her. It, 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 it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty obvious that she's like the main character of the three. But okay, so I'll give I you that. It wasn't. I don't know if that's like destroying. It's not the episode. No, but. The, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's like a. Oh my god, fuck this episode for that reason. Like, like you said, it's more just like, oh, that's awkward. Uh, but okay. something I did think was like really dumb was like, okay, so, um, she goes back to get her sister. That's fine. And then her sister pushes her away because the tree falls down. That's fine. But then. She jumps over the tree to find her sister, and then like, and then it's like, her sister's just gone, and it took her only like a couple of seconds to jump over the tree, and then her sister's just like completely missing, and I'm like, where the fuck did she go? Like, what? What? What happened? What? What? What okay. the fuck happened? She. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Just like. <laughs> Her sister should have been right there. Like, right when the tree fell, she it, it took her not even, like, a couple of seconds to jump right over the tree. To, to Her sister literally should have been right there. But she was completely missing. And she's running around the forest for a good couple of minutes trying to look for her sister. And she just keeps... Like, what? Again. It, 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 it seemed really contrived to me to just kind of force this situation of like of separating them and then and then all of a sudden the fucking portal comes out of nowhere to suck toe okay okay to okay no now there like i was with you to that point because i do remember again like it, it's been what uh, uh, about to be a week or whatever so I, I i'm with i was with you up until that point but the portal come the fuck on that supernatural shit that's obviously there's a reason behind it there's probably a, a villain or somebody that that made this shit happen to begin with there's still this only uh, episode we don't two know that yet we but don't know that yet so yeah like you can't get it solved within the second like within no, this no, episode. no 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 i'm not i'm not saying that the portal itself is a problem i'm saying the portal in combination with everything else it, it comes across as really contrived and that could get explained and that's fine i'm just saying that like it's like it's it felt to me like it's just one thing after another just so they can force the separation and i thought it was handled sloppily that's all that i'm saying Okay, but what about all the other parts of the episode? Because there was some great stuff showcasing Toa is a badass chick, not to be fucked with. The kidnapping of so, the the family, like that shit. So was dope. hold hold on, one thing at a time. So, um, one thing I really didn't like was how they overexplained certain things. So like Toa has this inner monologue about where she literally just explains she cares too much for her little sister may because she views herself i mean she views her as a substitute for setsuna and i don't think it was necessary to blatantly explain something like that oh to the shinsai that's no you're being fucking petty as fuck giving a little bit to make sure that people get driven home to get all the facts to get the characterization set in place so that nah, we can move nah, nah, on nah, nah. no i don't buy that I don't buy that. We don't we don't need her to explain to the audience, oh, the reason I care so much for her is because I view her as a substitute for my other little sister. Like, I don't we why couldn't that just be conveyed through her dialogue and her actions? Like that didn't need to be 
explained to like to the audience. Like, Mind you, I didn't like that. Again, not giving an excuse for this by any means because you know if that's your your criticism, fair enough. But I will say this that the reasoning behind that is clear for younger people. I guess this is also having unfortunately some of the Boruto effect where they're trying to get maybe younger girls to watch this shit and by doing so we're going to get shit like that. We're yeah, gonna- you know, I will I will grant you this. I am forgetting that this is a show that's targeted towards a younger audience. So, I will I will give you that that like maybe I'm being harsh there. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, but at the but at the same time, I think it is important to recognize that this is a sequel to Inuyasha. And that's and obviously Inuyasha in and of itself was aimed towards a, a younger audience at the time but that younger audience is not young anymore so i feel like while on one hand i understand that they still want to cater to a younger audience and to retain the charm of the original series but i think things like this should be you know there should be some consideration for the fact that there's also going to be an older audience by default because it's a sequel to an older show i don't i don't think that's unreasonable that's that's fair but i still don't see so far from everything you've mentioned it hasn't been anything that will drop the score down anything lower than a, a good seven so far, nothing you've said. I'm not has saying dropped. this. I'm not saying this is like a one out of ten or anything. So what, what do you like, What do you give it? What do you give it so far? Like a four. That's bad. Yeah, I didn't like it. That was not. You haven't given a specific thing that completely is a okay. This is bad. You've given things that at worst. I could argue 6, 6.5, it's fine. You haven't said anything where it's like, holy shit, in the animation, the, the bitch's legs was in one place and her body was in the other. You haven't said like, this absolutely makes no fucking okay, sense. Okay, if so- I... All right. If I'm being more unbiased, then it's probably more like a 5 or a 6. I'm giving you a 4 because I personally took a little bit more offense to some some aspects of it. And like one th- one th- okay so one thing in particular that I personally w- really didn't like was there this it there seemed to be this like this weird like theme of conformity that like at the end Toa you know like I, w- something I really liked about Toa was her rebelliousness right. and yet like there are certain parts of the episode though that seem to be pushing against that there is the teacher that was telling her like oh do as the romans do and then at the end when she's uh after she she beats up the bullies she you know she's she's hugging her sister and then she thinks to herself oh maybe i shouldn't be so stubborn and i'm like no you should be yourself bro she's a like, little girl that society is beating her down like i i like even no matter who this is aimed for, you gotta just look at it at it objectively. This is a little fucking kid that society is telling her she's wrong. Constantly. I don't like that. I don't. I. I. I, I don't. <laughs> but that's society. I don't fucking like that. That's that's literally realistic shit that goes on every day, b. Like yo, they. I get. I could go. I, no. 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 I. I don't like that. She was giving into it at the end. She's like, "Oh, maybe, maybe I should stop being so stubborn." It's like, "No, you should be yourself." Like, Yo, okay, I'm gonna throw you an example. At at fucking 14 years old, let's just say you wore this fucking tight ass yellow shirt, right? And you were like, "I don't give a fuck. I love this shirt. Fuck you, yeah. man. This is my Pikachu shirt, fam." And then you go to school, and your teacher says. Yo, uh, Shintai, for whatever reason they're calling you Shintai when you're 14 <laughs> in school. But yo, Shintai, take that shit off. You look fucking suspect. And then you go home. Your mother slaps you in the face. Yo, what the fuck you doing with that tight ass shirt? Take that shit off. You go to your fucking room. <laughs> you go on the comments of your, your Instagram. Yo, all the comments says, yo, Shintai, what the fuck you doing, fam? You wallet, take that shit off. 
you're gonna say, you know what, maybe I should just take this shit off. You're 14 years old, and society is beating you down throughout the fucking... Like, come on, cut us some slack. That's the weirdest fucking example. You could... <laughs> How so? You're 14. You, you, you're, you're set in your way. You want to be like I this. Think it's a, I think it's a little different for, like, to, to have, like, a, a shirt <laughs> and to just be like... Because, like... Because what the what the show is is saying is like oh it's wrong for her to to act the way she is. No, the, what the show is saying is that society is telling her that she's wrong. The show is not telling her. The show is showcasing what society is like. The show isn't like you know giving her a shocking revelation of no. At the end, she's just basically I, submitting. I, mm, I don't know if I agree with that yet. Like this this is just as far as this episode is concerned. So maybe maybe later on in the show it'll reevaluate that and go like no actually yes yeah, society is wrong and Toa was right to be who she is but at this point all we have right now is we have the teacher telling her this and we have her you know dealing with the bullies and it's like it 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 seems to be this weird thing of like she's wrong to be the way she is so far maybe it could change but uh, I'm not digging that. Shintai, Shintai, take off that fucking yellow shirt, okay? <laughs> I don't see how what I'm saying is unreasonable. I think you're being way too critical on the actions of a 14-year-old girl that is being told you are wrong. No matter what narrative but like, speaking, but she's like, a 14-year-old like, girl. But like, but like she's been like this throughout her whole life presumably you know yeah. like and the story and is she's... taking off at this point where like she's at this oh and it's also been explained how many schools she's changed at this particular point so it's not like this is just all like this has been an ongoing thing like she's constantly changing schools because of the way she is like her her family gets kidnapped because of the way she is that's you know that was another thing i thought was really weird was that like so the whole bullying thing happened because she stopped one bully in elementary school. And now, she, and because of that one thing, like, bullies are all coming out of the woodwork to fucking, you know, beat her up throughout the rest of her life. That, what? <laughs> that seems so extreme. It does seem extreme, but I could tell you, not from firsthand experience, but from observations in my life, if you live in a small town and you make a splash when you're younger, you're around these motherfuckers your whole life growing up, and they're going to keep fucking with you or having an issue with you because of that splash you made. And on top of that, if you're still set in your ways, even after that splash, and you're not giving in to what these motherfuckers are telling you, it'll it, it, it can be like that i'm not trusting to the fam, point, like to the point to the point where you're gonna hold a knife to like a fucking elementary school kid's neck like it well, just seems so extreme bro but, they were I mean, they whatever, were doing shit it, like that to in yu yu haka show they were taking knives and trying to fucking kill motherfuckers over school after school brawls did were they i don't remember that yeah like, they were doing all sorts of crazy shit, and, th and that's that there was no history. They was just like, hey, I, I don't like you. I'm going to fucking kill you. So, like, this one actually at least has some context behind it to give it a little more legitimacy of, like, yo, this is deep-rooted. This little fucking town, these motherfuckers don't like her because she's not going to submit to what society tells her to be like. And, again, I don't, I, I, don't, uh, I don't remember, well, I don't remember any, like, anyone in Yu Yu Hakusho, like, taking a neck. Uh, taking a knife to someone's neck that was taking like a, a neck to someone's knife <laughs> that'd be yeah, brutal exactly. <laughs> yo give me a fucking neck <laughs> <laughs> but like you know i mean i don't remember anyone like taking little kids hostage in yu yu haka show not little kids like no i don't i don't well maybe i don't know i don't remember that like that seems like really extreme and, and i gotta be clear mind you i'm not like uh, uh hey yo i love inuyasha i love yashahime i'm a lot of this is mainly to play devil's advocate and also you gotta cut us some slack fam she's a 14 year old girl i do like toa i do like her i i just wasn't really a fan of everything else around her right like it 
Uh, this... I, I kind of see what you're saying with like, hey, this is this is more about like society is beating her down and she's kind of relenting. It's like, oh, OK, maybe I should stop being like that. But I don't like that message. I don't think it's wrong for me to not like that message. I think it's important for, for people to, you know, to, to be true to who they are. And I, I like, and you know, even if it costs them their both, life or the family you, members. Here's the Here's the thing, though. You and I both like Toa's character. We, uh, you want? Do you want her to change? I don't think you do. Shintai. So if somebody broke into your house and put a fucking knife to one of your family members, you're telling me you're not gonna think maybe I should reevaluate me wearing this tight yellow shirt? Uh, yeah, because people <laughs> are gonna fucking break into my house over a shirt. You know what the fuck I mean? If your ways is causing shit like that for like somebody to break into your fucking house with a knife well, and, and, and try and kill one of your family members, you're gonna probably go as even as a grown adult, you're gonna go and be like, but like, I need but change. these are but these are circum but these are circumstances that are contrived by the show in order to force her to change. Well, I mean, it's all it's a show. It's not like this is a right? reality like, I just, show. Again, again, I just don't like how it seems to be pushing this idea. That's what I'm saying. I don't like how it's pushing this idea that she's wrong to be who she is. I, I think now, it's society now maybe, push. It's demonstrating how society genuinely is. Genuinely society. You know, you, I mean, you've heard of, the, we've spoken about this, the whole idea of the nail that sticks out gets hammered in. Yeah, gets hammered in. Yeah. And that's literally what we're witnessing. Sure. They're hammering that bitch's head in. And you gotta fucking take off that tight yellow shirt. <laughs> Yo, I'm not wearing no tight shirt. Tight yellow fucking Pikachu shirt. <laughs> They're breaking into your house because of a tight shirt. <laughs> okay, because we're dragging this shit out at this point. Point being, Shintai fucking hates everything. No, I like Toa. Well, cut her some slack. Can we can it. can we agree though that like Inuyasha and Kagome's daughter ended up being more annoying than than we expect? I thought she was gonna be like straight up just a girl version of Inuyasha, and she kind of wasn't. She was. I don't know. She she was way more um, abrasive and reckless than than even Inuyasha was, and she was more like in your face like inuyasha at least in like the earlier episodes i remember him being more like um more sullen more moody more well, he, angsty. He, he was older mind you like she's again he was older that's true she's a 14 like, year old little girl, girl that was raised on her own well no inuyasha was raised on his own too but this girl is is like is like yo i'm gonna fucking kick your ass even though i know you, you know i already explained to you that you have the wrong one I'm gonna kick your ass anyways. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch? I, uh, well, and to wrap this up, because we're going into overtime at this point, I'll say my my criticism about this whole thing is I don't like that it seems as though, despite the incredible fucking journey that these motherfuckers went through, uh, Kagome, Sango, Inuyasha, Kagome. Did I say Kagome? I think I said Kagome. Anyway, the the main cast they went through this incredible journey, and it seems like. They're not really like looking out for Moroha. Like, if Moroha, based on the bios that's been released before the show even came out, has been by herself, why the fuck isn't Kohaku and them like really around her and shit like that? So, that's something that's more so maybe it'll be explained over time. Like, maybe they stop being cool or they stop talking after a while. Something happened because it seems as though like there should be more of a relationship with Inuyasha's daughter and them with these motherfuckers that they went on incredible journeys with. They should be like, you know, family friends at this point, damn near family. So, that's something that I didn't really care for. Like, come on, you left this little girl by herself. None of you motherfuckers could have dragged her in and say yo we're gonna shape you into something so i'm a little bit like mm. yeah i just i wasn't a fan of this episode much that's a hater <clears throat> oh shit whoa <laughs> hey i you know uh, agree or disagree with me i don't think i said anything that was too crazy or unreasonable you know i fam you started off with their heads are too big what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> I didn't say that was like, oh my god, this show's a 1 out of 10 for this reason. I was just pointing out 
that it looked kind of weird, and I didn't like it. We got to do this again, but on the flip side. Maybe a show that I don't really care for that you like, and we do this. Because this was fun. I like this. You didn't even like it that much. You said it's like a 7. Uh, uh, 7 is good. Uh, there's plenty seven, of shows. 7 is like, 7 is like, oh, it's alright. Yeah, know, whatever. It's, it's not good. Like, it's not like, oh my god. Oh, no, fucking fuck the hell, though. It's, it, it, it was some and it's not like and it's not like I thought it was like the worst thing ever I like I said it's like a eh, it's a five or whatever Fam, you know, it's kind of we need eh. to we need to create a new score for you the the their heads are too big four or five that's the new shit's high score system <laughs> no Oh shit! Their heads are too fucking big. That's got to be like the title of this episode. Son. Their heads are too fucking I'm just, big. <laughs> you, you can't tell me that that shit didn't look weird. I I thought it was honestly cute. Like all oh, these two little girls in a forest. Like that's all. Like I just oh it's cute. Like whatever. Nah. Yo, Shintai has a burning pa- Like yo, you you just need to say fuck it and throw hands with Rumiko Takahashi at this point, okay? <laughs> Is she even in charge of this? Like, no, she did the character designs and said, "Pass me my check, motherfuckers." <laughs> then I ain't got no beef with her. Oh, She's man. just getting paid. Good for her. She's on like her twelfth manga. Like, on, honestly, I feel like, honestly, I feel like you were going more over the top just for the sake of it. I feel like we probably don't disagree that much on the episode. Uh, the episode was whatever. It was fine. Like at, at at worst I give it a 6, at best 7.5. Like that's where I'm at. I, the point I'm making is I'm a little bit more negative, you're a little bit more positive. Our opinions are not that diametrically opposed. Their that's he- what I'm trying to say. Their heads are too fucking big. <laughs> I just thought it looked weird. Oh, they shit. look like fucking little <laughs> bobbleheads. Like- All right, people, we we're running into overtime at this point. This was a fucking fun ass episode. I had a fucking blast. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Mainly, this all teasing. Is I like, oh, I'm never talking to Shintai again. He like we're just having fun, relaxed people. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, shit. From what we talked about this episode, what did we talk about this episode? I'm just like, I I, I laughed too hard. Uh oh. Um, num- uh, we, best. We talked episodes. about pupa. <laughs> no, oh, fuck that shit. That shit is trash. <laughs> Top um, classic first episodes. Some that we didn't name. L- list them in the comments if you'd like. Maybe a memory or two. Um, and uh, somebody, please settle this uh, the debate on Yashihime Princess Half Demon. What did you think of it? Do you agree with Shintai? Their heads were too fucking big. <laughs> no, I, I, I will be surprised. If there isn't at least a few people in the comments going like, yeah, they look kind of weird. Like, I'd be surprised. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see, people. But that is all we have for episode 19 of the Fnet World podcast. Uh, I'm Fnet World. He's Shin fucking Dizzle. And uh, as always, people, have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is the episode. Peace.